Let's do an, uh, another one. You ready for another problem? The knapsack problem, it's a classic. The inputs are um, objects. Each object has a volume and a price, a profit. And uh, we have a, a volume of the whole knapsack. And you're taking your nap, maybe you're robbing the store, you're running in, and uh, a solution tells you what to put in the knapsack. And uh, the value of the knapsack is the is the sum of the um oh this no this says you need if if it's going to be a valid solution the objects need to fit in the knapsack and we're not even trying to pack them right it could be have weird shaped objects we're, we're letting everything be sort of fluid the the total volume can exceed the volume of the knapsack right and then what's the cost of the solution? It's the total price of the things that you take. Right, everybody follow that? Um, all right, so we can ask what's a reasonable algorithm, right? And a good greedy criteria would be you run into the store and you grab the thing that's the most valuable, right? And does that work, you think? No, why not? Because it might be big, right? I mean, if it's if it fills your whole knapsack, then that's not very good, right? So in this example, oops, right? This one, the, the wagon has the highest price, right? But the optimal solution takes the two objects, right? So another greedy criteria, um, you could take the one with the smallest volume, but it's not worth any, that object's not worth anything, right? So another object, what you really want is that the price per volume is as big as possible, right? Why? Because that when it has, um, you know, it's using up a certain amount of volume and you want to get your, your price per volume as big as possible. Right, that's your resource. Everybody see the motivation in this? Right. So here's an example. These two objects both have price um, one per volume. And this guy has a price slightly less than one, right? Because four divided five divided by seven is less than one. So you're gonna put one of these objects in. But what's the problem now? There's nothing else fits. Right. And so <coughs> the optimal we take the wagon, right? Because even though its price per volume is smaller, it's it has more volume. So it has more price. Everybody understand the problem here? Right. Now it turns out that Knapsack is one of the classic MP complete problems. I Meaning if you had an algorithm for it, then you would, you would break cryptography if you know it. Um, but if we allow fractional solutions, what does a fractional solution mean? Is it means you can take a part of the bear, then this gives you an optimal solution. All right, does that make sense? Um, and as a general rule, uh, remember when I was talking about marrying the boys and girls together and saying a problem might come up that, right, this boy is going to marry half of her and half of her. As soon as you allow um, fractional solutions, generally the problem's easier to solve. In fact, we learned about linear programming and Linear programming uh, solves all of these with with uh, non-integer values, and so so in practice, what people do is they they allow the integers to be non-integers. They solve it using something like linear programming, and then they say, "Well, if I'm allocating this object." with the value of 0.9 and it's telling me whether to take it or not, 
then maybe I'll take it with probability 0.9, right? So then you do randomized rounding. All right. Um, any questions about that? <clears throat> yes, and we're going to cover it in class, and then we're going to show why the running time is still exponential. It all has to do with exponential in what, right? If it's if it's exponential in the the number of bits to write the values down, right? It's, it's, that's the problem. All right, so these slides don't expect to be very good. They were made in real time during COVID. So, uh, um, I guess the J's are probably even coming from previous slides where we had them be jobs, but suppose the, the nap, this is our knapsack and we put in these three objects, right? And, and the fairy godmother is consistent, but it's put in more objects. And then we, then the algorithm puts in some other object. And, and what we do is we, we keep, we, we stick in, the um the object that the algorithm took and we just truncate the objects that the fairy godmother still took right so the, you know the advantage of fractionals uh putting in fractional guys is that you can always fill the knapsack right so it does make sense that if you're always taking the biggest uh price per volume and you fill the knapsack, then that's that's going to be optimal, right? Everybody understand what we're doing here, right? So if you look at the paragraphs, right, we're saying, hey, this is what the algorithm has done so far. This is what the fairy godmother has. It's the solution consistent with the algorithm. This is what the the algorithm puts another object in the set right, in the knapsack, and then we change the fair godmother's solution into this simply by sticking in the object, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So how do you, how do we prove that the, that the value only goes up? Well, if you break it up into uh, little squares of volume one, right, <clears throat> then our new object has a bigger price per little square, right? So this little square, this little square has, has price greater or equal to that little square, which is kind of what you're saying, right? Does that make sense? And that's all we're going to say about it. 